Before I start this video, let me take 30 seconds to tell you something about Exergic. Exergic is India's most trusted and most experienced institute for online gate preparation. I am Chandresh Mahajan, founder and chief educator at Exergic. I am an All India Rank 37 in gate mechanical engineering, an ex Indian oil officer having 7 plus years of teaching experience as of now. These are the GATE 2021 Mechanical Engineering Toppers from Exergic. You can find their preparation strategy on Exergic's website. To know more about our GATE courses, you can visit our website or contact us on these details. Also, you can download Exergic GATE preparation app from Google Play Store. The link is available in the description of video. So the next example that we are going to discuss now is a previous year problem and a problem with a good learning. Actually I was discussing this question in the exergic one live classes and I predicted that since while interacting with the students I predicted that you will do mistakes these these mistakes and you will either take this option or that option or that option and they did the same mistakes so I can very clearly tell you that the mistakes that are possible in this question many of you can do those mistakes so it is important that you don't ignore this question just like any other previous year question it's a question with good learning which will be helpful not only in this question but in such similar question and let me tell you such questions are very frequent in gate they have been asked more than three times recently in gate 2021 so it's important that you pay attention to this lecture this example okay have a look at the question the question says that a frame of two arms of equal length l is shown in the adjacent figure and yes one more point here in many of the different sources that students refer to solve the question the answer of this question has been told incorrectly so it's important that you pay attention a frame of two arms of equal length l is shown in the adjacent figure the flexural rigidity of each arm of the frame is same which is EI. Question is asking you the vertical deflection at the point of application of load P. You can see a load is acting here and it is asking you the vertical deflection at the point of application. These are the four options given to you. You can see that PL cube by 3 EI is almost common in all of them. Only the coefficient which is multiplied with that is different. So obviously you have to solve this question. You cannot eliminate options based upon the standard results. Coming to this question, I am going to tell you three different ways to solve the question, right? And in those three methods, first one will be Castigliano, second will be superposition method and then again Castigliano. Why so? Because this method which I will be telling you first is going to be incorrect method. That method that you will find in different sources which you actually refer to where it has been answered incorrectly if they used Castigliano method. And here I will be telling you the correct Castigliano method. And in this whole process, there will be many learning points for you, even in this discussion, even in this discussion, even in this one. So generally when I start the question, I do a pre-analysis of the question. I tell you what are the you know, possible learnings that you can get, how you can attack the question, how you can understand the language of the question. Here I am not going to do that right now. Right now I will start with the first method. I will start with the Castigliano method first and then after completing the first method I will tell you the learning points and then we will continue the discussion. So as I told you the first method that I am telling right now is going to be an incorrect method. So if we start with Castigliano method as we have seen in different uh, cases what we do Firstly, we try to find out the strain energy of all the components. Here, we don't have a single component. Question clearly mentioned that there are two arms which are visible, BC and AB. Let's find out the strain energy stored in BC and then we will move to AB. In BC, you can clearly see that the expression of moment will be P multiplied by X. So in the expression of finding out the strain energy of BC, just put PX in place of the moment here, right? And then you perform the integration. Okay. 
Here P is going to be a constant. So P square will come out, 2EI will come out. Integration of S x square with respect to dx is x cube by 3 from 0 to L. Put the value, you will get this expression. Right? This is the strain energy only of BC. Moving ahead to AB. If you look at AB, let's define another variable Y to find out the moment at any section in AB, right? That's what we do in Castigliano. We define a section and write the expression of moment and solve it. Since it's an incorrect method, I am not discussing much about it. I want to discuss some things here, but I will discuss that in few minutes. So here, what majority of the students will do, let me tell you. They will look at the load P. This load P is acting at a distance of L from this point or rather to this whole uh, arm AB. P is at a constant distance, right? The line of action of P is at the same distance L. So the moment that P will be having, which is going to be P multiplied by L, will be a constant for this whole beam. And what they do? What do they write? They write MX as PL, right? Because that P is a constant and then they proceed with the integration. So that's what same thing I am doing here, right? Again, I am telling you, it's the incorrect way. So M is as PL I have written, square, so I will square it, I will take it out of the integration. So P square L square by 2 EI will be left with integration of dy from 0 to L, which is nothing but L. So it will become L cube. This is the second equation, the strain energy of AB. To find out the total strain energy, we are simply going to add this first expression of strain energy with the second expression of strain energy. If you do that, you will get 2 by 3 P square L cubed. So from Castigliano theorem, to find out the vertical deflection at the point C, you have to differentiate the total strain energy with respect to P. Very simple, nothing new here. So the expression of strain energy we already have here. If you differentiate that with respect to P, you will get 4 P L cubed divided by 3 E I, right? This P square will become 2P upon differentiation. That is the expression that we have. And as I told you, this is the incorrect way of doing the question. The answer that you are getting here is incorrect. I know some of you would have figured it out that what is the mistake here. But still, I would recommend to understand this carefully, what I'm about to tell you, because I'm starting the analysis from now. The analysis that I usually do before the question let me do that analysis now. Have a look at this question first. I can see that this is a load P acting at the free end, no problem. I can very clearly see this is a hinge which is connecting both the arms together. But what about this shape? What about this shape? What is this shape? What type of support is that? It looks like a hinge. It looks in the shape of a hinge. But the arm that is mo moving ahead, the beam is not connecting it at a center or at a point like we generally see. Something is different here, right? Let's have a look at that specifically. Only this part we are focusing on. And for ease of understanding, let us rotate that by 90 degrees. So if you do that, this is the shape that you will get, right? This upper part of the beam I have just shown and rotated clockwise by 90 degrees. If this was a specific hinge support, then this is how we generally represent it. But here, it is not hinged or connected at any point like that. Rather, it looks as if it is simply resting over that surface, right? Now ask, now let me ask one question here. If I try to move this beam in that direction or in this direction, what do you think? Is it going to resist? Is the support going to resist it? I don't think so. Because it is not hinged to it. Rather, it is simply resting over the surface. Yes, if I want to move it in this direction, it will resist. It is going to give a reaction a resistance in the vertical direction. But as long as horizontal motion is considered, I don't see any resistance being offered by this support. So basically, this support is nothing but a roller support. It acts like a roller support only, whatever be the shape. It acts as a roller support because it is not, you know, restricting the horizontal motion or longitudinal motion would be the better way to tell it. 
So this longitudinal motion along the length of the rod or the beam or the arm, it is not resisting, only in one direction it is resisting. It can generate the reaction only in the direction of resistance. So it is a roller support, it effectively is a roller support. So basically, if I talk about this specific arm AB, it is nothing but a case like this, where A is roller support offering reaction only in one direction, in this direction. B is a hinge support which will offer reaction in both the directions and a moment is acting at B. This is the specific free body diagram only of AB. Now where from where is the moment coming at B? Moment is coming at B because this force P which is acting, it is acting at a distance of L which will be applied as a moment at the hinge B, right? And this is the point where some students again get confused. What do they understand? What do they analyze from this situation? That sir, if we draw the free body diagram of AB, obviously there is going to be a reaction in this direction, but B is a hinge. It will have reaction in both the directions. And a moment is also acting at B, which means B acts as a fixed support. That's what they think. And at B, both the reactions are coming and moment is also coming. So sir, this acts as a fixed support now. So only P is acting and it is acting as a cantilever beam. So P L cube divided by 3 E i is going to be the answer. This is what I knew students can get confused in and they also did confuse. I mean, not confuse means they gave the answer as P L cube by 3 E i by the same logic that they thought it is going to be a fixed support and it was in the one of the options also. P L cube by 3 E i was waiting that yes, tick me, select me and I in return I will give you negative marks because that's not the right answer, right? So why it is not acting as a fixed support even when you have reaction in both the direction and the moment? Because it is not a reactive moment, it is the applied moment. You can apply moment anywhere you want, right? Does not make that a fixed support. If you apply a moment at a hinge, in this situation we have a hinge and I have applied a moment there. Does it mean that it will make it a fixed support? No. The fixed support that we have. So if you have a fixed support, the moment that fixed support has is the reactive moment. right? If you are applying a load P or a moment P which will try to bend it, it will oppose that specifically at this fixed end. So whatever moment you are applying, the fixed end will be experiencing some moment as a result of the load you are applying. It will try to balance that. That will be a reactive moment which will try to balance the applied moment as a result of whatever loads you have. Is this the reactive moment? No. It is the moment which is actually applied by P. P multiplied by L is direct moment that you are applying at the hinge. Hinge is not resisting rotation or any type of bending. How it will resist it? From the basics of hinge and all the supports we know that this is not going to happen if you want to rotate it about the hinge, you apply the moment, it will rotate. What's stopping it? Nothing is stopping it. So how come it will be a fixed support? It will not be a fixed support at all. Right? So you need to differentiate that don't do the mistake wherever you saw two reactions and a moment and you thought it's a fixed support. It's not. Right? You have to look at the support in reality, in actual situation and analyze what is the support. Is it resisting it or not? That's the common funda and concept that I told you when I was teaching support. What type of loads it resists? what type of motion it resists, that will decide the type of support, right? That concept is important in this question. It helped you in deciding this reaction also and it has helped you in deciding this reaction as well. Coming back to the question. This is the beam AB in front of us. It's vertical here. I have shown it horizontal. A moment M is acting here, which is nothing but P multiplied by this distance L and it is a standard case. It is a standard case. We know that in such a, such a situation, it is going to bend like this, right? This moment, this applied moment is going to make an arc like this and the slope will not be same. It's not going to be a symmetrical loading. The slope at the point of at the end where moment is applied at end B is ML divided by 3 EI but at the other end where it is not applied, 
it is ml by 6 ei right when you apply it at the hinge like this these are the two expressions of slope that we already know and as i told you knowing the standard results can help you if you know the standard results and if you try to go ahead and solve the question from the superposition method it is going to get you to the answer slightly faster right i have been telling this to you that if you know enough standard results almost all questions you can answer that are generally asked in gate 99 percent of them you can answer within seconds but if you don't know that then you move to other methods depending upon the question depending upon the case you can decide that what else method should i use other than superposition method here if i try to solve it using superposition method how can i do it now assume bc is rigid bc is not allowing any deformation at all assume it as a result of this load p a moment is coming here and that moment as you can see looks like a clockwise moment this will be bent accordingly right in the clockwise sense that rotation will it affect the the inclination of this rigid beam listen to my question again if a b a b is bending like this right because a moment is being applied at the hinge which will try to bend it suppose it got bent here by an angle of theta my question to you is that tell me whether b c will get affected or not if you look at the question if you look at the language of the question in reality this whole setup is a single frame with two arms so in reality it is a single frame like this which is hinged here which is hinged here right and is roller supported you can say here right and a load is acting here so whatever deformation is going to come in this arm if this is getting rotated or this is getting bent it will affect the horizontal one also it is a single frame that you have here right or not so it's a single frame that you have if the upper arm is getting rotated is getting bent the arm connected to that will also get will also try to bend or rotate in that direction because they are connected they are continuous here also as a result of this moment this ab specifically let's talk about this point b is getting bent the slope that we are having at b is this one ml divided by 3 ei that slope will obviously be reflected in bc also because it is the same frame if this one upper half specifically this point let's say is trying to rotate by theta this will also try to rotate by theta they are continuous material so here also this bc even if it was rigid it will try to rotate with an angle of theta which will cause this to deflect as a result of this p this moment this is getting bent like this a moment is being applied like this so if we have a b like this and a clockwise moment is acting here this is something that you must understand because it will help you in deciding whether the deflection will be in the downward direction or the upward direction it's important you will see very soon why so the moment is going to bend it like this because it's a clockwise moment if you have a rod like this to apply a clockwise moment it will push it there due to this clockwise moment so this pushing in the clockwise theta will push bc also in the clockwise direction of theta which will cause it to deflect by some amount but in reality bc is not rigid which means that bc will deform even more because p is also acting on bc so the effect of p on ab will deflect bc also and the effect of p on bc will deflect bc even more right so these two effects will be added together to find out the total deflection this is the concept of superposition method right generally in superposition method we have more than one loads acting on the same beam right or not so you have a cantilever beam and maybe there's a load acting and a moment acting both of the effects you consider to find out the total deflection here load acting is in a way p load is acting same load is acting but that load is having different effects on different beams you have to find out the effect of different components on point c bc will have some effect on c ab will have some effect on c both of their effect you have to superimpose so this superposition method 
is slightly different than the other superposition problems that we generally solve, right? So basically, superposition method is a common sense, right? If a point is trying to move up by x, other effect is trying to move it down by y, so net upward movement will be x minus y. Right? It's, a, it's a common sense method. Here also, effect of P on AB, how it will affect the point C, that we have understood, right? It will try to deflect it in the downward direction. And P on BC will also try to deflect it in the downward direction even more. So both these values of del you have to add to find out the total deflection of C. This is the funda of superposition method here. That is what we are doing here. Del 1, value of del 1, how you can find it out if this has rotated by an angle of theta, this has rotated by, rotated by an angle theta, how can you find out the deflection? I have already discussed this in one of the previous examples, right? I told you different situations where it can be applied. So I am not repeating that here. This is the expression that we can directly use. The value of theta, we already know. This is the point where moment is acting. When the moment is acting at the same point in the simply supported beam, this is the slope. So MLY 3EI is the value of theta. M is nothing but PL. So P multiplied by L cube, 3 L are there, right? Moment has 1 L, 1 L, 1 L. So L cube divided by 3 EI. This is the deflection 1. To find out the deflection of 2, we have to consider B as fixed. Now, this is something that I have already told you, repeating it again, that whenever we have a such case where we have to find out the deflection of C with respect to B, then you have to hypothetically assume B as fixed. That if load is acting at C, how much will be the deflection with respect to B? When I'm saying with respect to B, I won't consider any rotation of B, which means hypothetically I'm assuming B to be fixed. It's not fixed, but to find out the deflection of C with respect to B, I assume it to be fixed just like a cantilever beam. So if AB in a way or B in a way was fixed, was rigid, it was not allowed the movement, then how much it will deform only due to BC that we are finding it out which is a direct result PL cube divided by 3 EI, right? If you have B as fixed here and this is C, a load is acting. So we know it's PL cube divided by 3 EI. Both those affects the rotation, the deflection due to BC and deflection due to AB. Both of them we have added. If you add them, this is what you will get. Basically, both of them are coming out to be same. So 2 PL cube divided by 3 EI you are getting as the final deflection. And now look at the result. The final deflection that you were getting using Castigliano was 4 by 3 PL cube, 4 PL cube by 3 EI. But here it is 2 PL cube by 3 EI. Clearly one of them is wrong. And as I told you, the first Castigliano method was wrong. Where was it wrong? Let us understand that. The very first step that we did there to find out the strain energy in BC, that was correct. The expression of moment is going to be Px at any section. Now coming to find out the strain energy stored in AB. For that we need to find out the expression of moment in AB. And what mistake we made in the first Castigliano method. That we looked at P. It was applying a moment of PL on B. And we just considered that without considering the reactions. Right, it's a possible silly mistakes. In fact, students did this mistake. In pressure situation, they make this mistake, right? Obviously, gate is one of the pressure situation. When you're writing any exam, it's a pressure situation. It is possible to make that mistake. For example, as I told you, in exergic one live class, students made that mistake. Right? It was a pressure situation. I give them a specific time in which they have to solve the question and it's a possible uh, situation to do some error, some mistake. Here also, if you don't consider the reactions at B, you will not be able to reach the right answer. Right? Just like if you don't realize what type of support this is. Just like if you think B is a fixed support. In a similar way, if you ignore the reactions at B, you are not going to get the right answer. And since B is a hinge, hinge support, this is how you can represent reactions at B. Right? in two different directions and this moment acting is external. Similarly, at point A, a reaction is acting like this transverse to the direction of B. This is the free body diagram of AB. Okay. 
what we are trying to do now is to determine the unknown reactions unknown reactions so that we can write the expression of moment at any point here also one more mistake is possible let me tell you let's first proceed and try to find out the unknown reactions one way of finding out the unknown reaction is to just look at the complete frame right this is the complete frame that we have it is hinged about this point right load p is acting here you have to find out the unknown reactions let's proceed with r a in the frame just take the moment about the point b if you take the moment about the point b p l this p is trying to rotate clockwise this r a is trying to rotate counterclockwise both of the moment should be equal so p multiplied by l should be equal to r a multiplied by l which clearly means r a should also be equal to p right do you think some mistake is possible here yes let me tell you what mistake is possible what some students will do they will think that sir a moment is acting now here they will say sir because p is there so p will be having a moment m here now let's take the moment about b to find out unknown ra you're getting what i'm telling what i did when i was taking the moment about b i did not consider na, any moment about this point right but some of the students can think that sir moment is acting about b you himself sir told in the previous discussion sir you himself told the moment is acting about b so sir why will not take the moment because if you take the moment equation will change ra value will change right we don't consider the moment here because this moment is as a result of p only no in that moment we are considering when you draw the free body diagram and you take the moment about b what you are going to do p multiplied by l minus r multiplied by ra multiplied by l this should be equal to zero what is this this moment that you are showing here is the same moment now p multiplied by l so what is the need to double consider it here also you are considering here moment also you will consider what is the need of that we considered that when we were discussing the effect of p on this specifically that what effect this moment which is a result of p is going to have on vertical arm right but when you are drawing the free body diagram we are considering now that moment pl so why do you need to double consider that you don't need to consider this moment you just consider the p and ra which will give you that p or ra is same as p so you have found out this value and if ra is equal to p rb2 should also be equal to p yeah right summation of horizontal forces and no other vertical force is there other than rb1 so it should be zero so now you have all the values you have this rb1 does not exist this is equal to p this is also equal to p and moment is equal to p multiplied by l now you select any section at a distance of y and now you can write the expression of moment at that section let us do that so although this distance was y but let's take it x only since these two integrations are separate it will not matter so at any such section at a distance of x from here the moment is going to be the fixed moment pl which is applied minus p multiplied by this distance x note that pl is trying to rotate it in a specific direction which is opposite of this p this pl is trying to rotate it like like this p is trying to rotate it in the opposite way that's why both of them are subtracted here this is the expression of moment that we have and now it's simple you just need to integrate this in the expression of strain energy and then ultimately differentiate the strain energy with respect to the load p to find out the deflection in the direction so i have already done that the expression of moment i have put here p being common will come out as p square l minus x whole square dx to ei is a constant it will come out integration is from 0 to l right in this section also as i told you you can write it as x or you can write it as y both of them are separate integrations so does not matter length also is same from 0 to l right so integrate it from 0 to l here it's going to be l minus x cube by 3 it's minus 1 is the coefficient of x so in integration it will be divided not only by 3 which is coming as a result of this integration of l minus x cube by 3 but also a minus sign will be added because coefficient of x is minus 1 
So this is the expression integrating from 0 to L. Just put the value L minus L cube is 0 minus this term when you put x is equal to 0 you will get L cube by minus 3. Right? So minus minus will become plus. So ultimately it's P square L cube divided by 3 multiplied by 2 is 6 EI. What is this? This is the strain energy for AB. The strain energy of BC we already calculated equation 1 P square L cube by 6 EI. The strain energy of AB is coming out to be same P square L cube by 6 EI. So when you add them you will get 2 PL square uh, L cube by 6 EI which means this will become 1 by 3 here right. So P square L cube by 3 EI is the total strain energy you need to differentiate that with respect to P. When you do that P square will become 2P. This is the final expression that you will get and now this expression and the expression from the superposition method are coming out to be the same. So this was the right way of solving this question. If you look at the question as a whole, it gave you good learnings regarding not only the method of Castigliano and superposition method, but a very basic learning that never ever ignore the reactions, right? Because when you are given a slightly complex question, it is possible that small things you may overlook, you may not pay attention to. You are in the heat of the question trying to get to the answer and you may miss small things, especially in such a question where the support itself slightly looks unclear, right? Don't do that. In this whole question, the learning that you have got will help you not only in solving few more previous year questions because as I told you, there have been some direct previous year questions like this, after this also, simple than this. Even recently, as I told you, a very simple question has been asked in GATE 2021, which is a repetition of question asked in GATE 2014, where this hinge is not there and this is fixed. So if this is fixed and this is the L shape, there is no hinge here, a load P is acting. So this is obviously a simple version, a simpler version of this question. And this has been asked in different orientation two times. Okay. It's not about just, you know, trying to see what questions are asked in gate, right? Gate does not work like that. There can be new concepts, new questions being asked. But at least what has been discussed in gate, what has been asked in gate, you should be thoroughly confident in that, right? Other than that, new concepts, we are continuously solving in the examples, right? You would have seen, we have gone above the gate level also. But at the same time, it is important to totally master all the hidden concepts in gate questions as well. We are going to solve many more such questions. Thank you.